بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اشتبا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا فأصلحوا بينهما فإن بغت أخراهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى فقاتل التي تبغي حتى تفيء إلى أمر الله فإن فاء فأصلحوا بينهما بالعدل وأقسطوا إن الله يحب المقسطين إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم واتقوا الله لعلكم ترحمون صدق الله العظيم Going back to the series of Tazkiyah that we started some time back purification of our nafs, of our ruh, of our hearts, of our minds, and through that purifying our actions. Adopting the true akhlaq of the nabuwa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and living in this world the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to live, and dealing with people the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to deal with others, reacting to situations, not according to our nafs, not according to our desire, not according to our emotions, but according to the teachings that we have received from our Prophet ﷺ. Today, inshallah, we'll be talking about a disease. that hardly you would find a person who's not affected by it. You would really have to search very hard to find a person who is not carrying this disease, has no elements of this disease in his heart, you don't see reaction of this disease in that person. It's a disease that really destroying our society, destroying us as an ummah, destroying our communities, in fact, destroying our families. And that is called in Arabic al bagda wa shahna hatred and disliking others. Look into your heart. There may be a list of people that we don't like. These are the people that I would never forgive. 
These are the pe <coughs> people who try to hurt me. I will try to take revenge whenever I can. These are the people I would never talk to. These are the people that I don't want to see their face. And then, with the special occasions in our life, as you start making the list of people <coughs> that, would you that you would like to invite, but I will not invite these people for whatever reasons we have in our minds. This disliking of people, it's a disease that most of the time is justified within our souls. We justify it in our mind. I have a good reason. I'm not going to, I won't, I don't like these people because I have a good reason for it. They did this, they did this, they said this. If we look at the reasons that we have and apply these reasons to the, through the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the light of the Qur'an and the sunnah, we will realize that maybe we will have to turn over, just switch over totally our mentality, and that is, one of us was, too, was bad, according to me up to now, he was the bad person, but maybe after looking into the ayahs of the Quran and the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the situation is just the opposite. Maybe difficult to accept. Very difficult, I know, especially at this stage, when we are just hearing it for the first time. Very difficult. And unfortunately, when you start looking at the list of people that we don't like, it does not start with people who happen to be in the jail because they hurt us, because they committed a crime against us, the top of the list, our own brothers and sisters. The top of the list, our cousins, <coughs> our uncles, our aunts. And in some of the people's list, parents are also there. And the list continues to the neighbors, to people that we have ever associated at some point in our life. Those who are good friends, husband and wife, who spend long time together and did not make it up, could not continue with that relation. And because they ended up at a divorce, that comes up to be on the top of the list. Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Once he's asked Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and the hadith is in Sunan Abi Dawood. <coughs> Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala ukhbirukum bi afdali min darajati siyami wa salati wa sadaqa Talking to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. Should I inform you of something <coughs> That is more rewarding. Pay attention. More rewarding than salah, than fasting, and than sadaqah. Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een. As amazed as we could be at this time. Something more rewarding than salah, sadaqah, and siyam, fasting all together. Right away, Bala Ya Rasulullah, please sure inform us, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Islahu dhatil bayin. Reconciliation between two people who don't like each other. This act is more rewarding than salah, sadaqah, and sawm. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wa fasadu dhatil bayin. He al haliqa. Disliking people is the thing that will destroy your Iman. Do we realize what did he say? He's not saying you get a thousand sins. 
He's not saying you will go to Jahannam for one year or two years or hundred years or five hundred years. It will shave off your iman from your heart. It's difficult to digest. Is it true? What are we hearing? Is it true? Is this what we are reading in the hadith? Is this what really he meant? There is hadith in Sahih Muslim. <coughs> that may explain it to us a little better. Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu is the narrator of the hadith who says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Tuftahu abwaabu al-jannah yawm al-ithnayni wa yawm al-khamis Every Monday and every Thursday Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the doors of the jannah and he welcomes the a'mal of the believers and Angels, they start taking our amal to Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala so that when they are presented at the time when the door of the Jannah is open, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, if he did not commit any act of shirk and he repented any time during this period, then I'm forgiving this person and take him to Jannah. Keep the door of the Jannah open for this person. So malaika, they carry our a'mal and they start taking it at that time. The hadith is not from a book of a history. This is Sahih Muslim. Every Monday, every Thursday, Allah opens the doors of Jannah and malaika are presenting our actions over there by the door of the Jannah to see if the door of Jannah can open for us according to what we have done the, during this week. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he said, A'mal are being presented. People have come in a different type of sin. <coughs> and of course we know, if we expect only the A'mal of those who never committed any sin during this period would be presented, hardly would there would be any person's A'mal that would be presented there. We are not talking about Anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam's time now. For sure there are amal that, are, that have sins associated with it. People who have committed different type of sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This person did not commit shirk. Did not, he tried to please me. He tried to repent. I'm forgiving him. Oh angels, be my witness. I'm forgiving this person. Allow this person to enter the Jannah if he comes in this situation. All of a sudden, someone's amal are presented. A lot of good deeds. In somewhere in the record it says this person at this present time he is not talking to some other person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says keep this person out. There is no room for these type of people in Jannah. He doesn't talk to someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says leave these two people out. Until they get together again. Otherwise, leave the doors of Jannah closed for them. I cannot open the door of Jannah for these type of people. We all know the hadith. That is about the 15th night of Shaban. Authentic hadith from Suman ibn Majah. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, On the 15th night of Shaban, يَنظُرُ اللَّهُ إِلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ Allah looks at all of His creatures and He forgives more people than the number of hair on the goats of a clan that was called Bani Kalab that had the largest number of goats. He says, Allah forgives more people than the number of hairs of the goats of that clan on that night. Except, Except two people do not get forgiveness even at that time. Number one is mushrik and number two who carries grudge against others. Imagine when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he's mentioning only two. One out of Islam and that is mushrik 
The only people of Iman that are refused from that Rahmah and forgiveness even at that night, Mushahin, a person who carries grudge against others. And then we are trying to justify our action. We can justify it in this dunya. Can we ask Allah, tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, this was the reason so the door of the Jannah has to be open for me? <coughs> and muhaddisin have very intensively discussed this topic. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He opens the doors of Jannah every Thursday, every Monday, and there are people with all kind of major sins that are allowed over there and they are receiving the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah, the door of the Jannah remains open for them. How come this person who carries grudge in his heart, Allah is closing the door of the Jannah on that person? And they say the reason is because this is a quality that many times lead the people towards outside of Iman. I don't want to use any other word for it. Because it's a quality. That many times makes a person rejects his own faith and his own iman. And we know it. Let me remind you of some of the common words that we hear in our society. Oh, this person, he does so much hajj and he thinks he's big, but he does this. We are blaming his hajj for his actions. He performs salah and he does this. As if his salah is making him do this. And then you hear the next step. What good is that salah for? It's better not to do salah then. He better not do this. Why are we blaming the good deeds of this person for whatever wrong he's doing? At least we should appreciate the good that he's trying to do these good things. Uthman radiallahu anhu was surrounded in his house by people who decided to kill Amir al Mu'mineen. The Khalifa of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of Al-Ashr al-Mubashara, the person who has at least 10 certificates of Jannah from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He knows that this is what they are planning. In fact, he looks out at them and he asks them, what is the reason of killing me? Because according to the hadith, you cannot justify killing me. Subhanallah is talking to them. And it was time for salah. Some of the sahaba called Uthman radiallahu anhu, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Now, the leader of the fitna, the person who's leading these people, is leading the salah in the masjid. What should we do? Uthman radiallahu anhu responds, Subhanallah, amazing. Something you won't find anything similar to this in the history. A very unique response that you find in the history, when Uthman radiallahu anhu said, Salah is the best action a person can perform. So when they do something good, be with them. Why are you asking me? If he's leading the salah, after all, he's a mu'min. Even if he decided to kill me, but that, that doesn't take him out of the fold of iman. Go and perform salah behind him. Imagine what we would say. I don't talk to him. Son, if you go there, then make sure you don't come to my home. If you go, if you attend this wedding, then we will never, we'll never invite you again. If that person is coming, then I'm not coming. Isn't this so common in our culture? And Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, There are two contagious diseases. There are two diseases that have come from the previous nations into this nation. Al-Hasad wal baghda Hatred and jealousy. Then he said, Wahiya al And both of these qualities are such that they would shave it off totally. Then he explained, La aqulu tahliq al-shar. He says, I don't mean it will shave your hair. Walakin tahliq al deen but this will shave off your deen and your iman from your heart. On the day of Qiyamah, a person will come thinking I have a lot of good deeds, but there is no iman, so none of those deeds will be of any help to this person. This thing was in the heart that was shaving off his iman and his deen. It means shade off. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then 
subhanallah, how beautifully he teaches us the remedy for this. But we are not going to go into the details on how to treat this disease, inshallah, next week we can talk about it. Because for some of us, only this Juma was a good, good Friday. Inshallah, for, for all of us now, from now on, every Juma will become a good Friday. So inshallah, every Juma will come like this. Because that good Friday is for some people that they have only one good Friday in a year. You feel bad for them. Alhamdulillah for this ummah, Allah gave us every Juma became a good Friday for us. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called us Eid. This Juma, he called it Eid. Once Salat al Eid, the day of Eid was on the day of Juma, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Sahaba, Today you have two Eids, Juma and Eid. So Juma is our Eid, is a weekly Eid for a believer. So keep every Juma as a good Friday for your soul, especially when it comes to Salah. May Allah make it good for all of us. And of course, it will be good if we perform Salat al Jama'ah, Salat al Jama'ah with Jama'ah. That will be the only way that it will become a good Friday, inshallah, for all of us. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said <coughs> that I swear by God after telling <coughs> that these are the two diseases that we got from the previous nations. He says, Walladhi nafsu Muhammadin biyadi. I swear by God who controls my life. Lan tadkhunul jannata hatta tu'minu. None of you can ever enter the Jannah until you believe, until you have Iman. Without Iman, there is no Jannah. I, Muhammad, will not consider you a believer until you love each other. You cannot be a believer until you love each other. Then he says, Afala adullukum. Should I inform you of something? If you would do it, you will start loving each other. Spread salam amongst yourselves. Don't stop saying salam. And this is another topic we'll talk about some other day. Our salam. Three people are standing. You know one of them, you say salam to that person, the other two people are just waiting for you to leave. We don't say salam to people that we don't know. Whereas salam is for all believers, all the people of Iman. There is a hadith in Sunan ibn Majah. Amazing hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, look into your heart. See if you dislike someone. Look into your heart. See if you dislike someone. Then he tells us, it's enough for a person to know how evil he is that he hates someone in his heart. That's what I was saying. Maybe we'll have to turn it over. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us when you dislike someone that is a good enough sign that there is evil inside you. Regardless of that person. But there is something wrong inside you. It's enough for a person to know that he has shar in himself. He has evil in himself. Muslim That he looks down at other Muslims. It's a very, very widespread disease. As I said, hardly we find families that don't have something like this. And therefore, Treatment for this disease is very important. It's something that we have to take it seriously. God forbid, before we, it comes to a day when we are standing before Rabbul Alameen and we find that these, this disease has shaved off every iman, every part of iman that we had in our hearts. There is no room whatsoever in our deen for this disease. Therefore, it has to be treated. Insha'Allah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us, in our next sessions, we will talk about the treatment for this disease and how to control it. It may sound difficult, but believe me, subhanAllah, as Allah says, He did not make this deen difficult, 
Even the treatment to these diseases are extremely simple. Believe me, it's more simple than the medicine that you take for your headache. And almost every person takes those normal medicines. The treatment for these diseases is even easier than those. It's only if a person is willing to do it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify us. May Allah keep our hearts clean. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us love for others. Fill our hearts for, with love for the ummah. Fill our hearts for love with love for all mankind, for all the creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the true peaceful people in the garden of this world. Ibadullah. Inna min uqubat al-ma'asi allati bayyanaha Allah subhanahu jalla wa ala fi kitabihi al-aziz. Hiya wuqoo al-adawah al-baghda wa al-shahna fi ma bayna al-nas. Hadi al-adawah. ليس شيء من أنفسنا أن الإنسان قرر أن يعادي فلان وفلان وفلان إنما هذه العداوات والبغضاء والشحناء هي عقوبة من الله جل وعلا وتدبروا كلام الله جل وعلا حيث يقول ومن الذين قالوا إنا نصارى أخذنا ميثاقهم فنسوا حظا مما ذكروا به لما نسوا كتاب الله لما نسوا ما ذكروا به عن طريق أنبياء الله عليهم الصلاة والسلام نسوا حظا مما ذكروا به فأغرينا بينهم العداوة والبغضاء إلى يوم القيامة كيف جاءت العداوة والبغضاء فيما بينهم نسوا حظا مما ذكروا به لما نسوا كتاب الله نسوا تعاليم أنبياء الله عليهم الصلاة والسلام أغرينا بينهم العداوة والبغضاء إلى متى اليوم يومين ثلاثة أيام إلى يوم القيامة وسوف ينبئهم الله بما كانوا يصنعون والله جل وعلا يقول في مقام آخر وقالت اليهود يد الله مغلولة غلت أيديهم ولعنوا بما قالوا بل يداه مبسوطتان ينفق كيف يشاء وليزيدن كثيرا منهم ما أنزل إليك من ربك طغيانا وكفرا كره كتاب الله فألقينا بينهم العداوة والبغضاء إلى يوم القيامة فأغرينا بينهم العداوة والبغضاء فهذا المرض والعداوة والبغضاء هذه من عقوبات المعاصي من عقوبات التخلي عن كتاب الله جل وعلا وعن تعاليم الأنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام وكما قال الله جل وعلا صار أحوال هذه الأمة كما كانت أحوال الأمم الماضية كما يقول جل وعلا تحسبهم جميعا وقلوبهم شتى ذلك بأنهم قوم لا يفقهون عزن الله وإياكم أن نكون من هؤلاء وجعلني الله وإياكم من أهل الخير جعلني الله وإياكم ممن يكون مفاتيحا للخير للناس ويكون مغاليقا للشر بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب تستغفروه إنه غفور رحيم. مولاي صلي وسلم